Okay, we got this Air Hogs FPV high speed race car unboxing that we're going to be doing today. So we've got the actual headset here. It's still stuck to the box. I'm going to have to get it out. We got the actual car and the remote control. And here is the control unit. And on the box it says it does require two AAA batteries, which are not included, so make sure you have that. Uh, the tires feel like they're rubber, actual rubber tires. You can see the camera here, the front. So it's going to have the motion video from that port. The way that this works is you put your cell phone inside and you strap it to your head. So. We'll see how well that actually works out. Uh, fits on the screen. You can see, I mean, it would just not fit like that. So, with this part off, uh, it looks like it fits perfectly. So it's gonna be like that. The idea is that when the screen is on, so I guess you might wanna make sure your device is actually activated first. Um, it'll project onto the screen here. Uh, it looks like a, Micro USB, which is why they give you the cable, but you know, if you probably have, a, have one already ava available. And it says it takes about 80 to 90 minutes for a full charge. FPV race car. There you go, Air Hogs FPV high speed race. Install this. So the car is somewhat fast. I wouldn't call it real quick, but it does accelerate decently. At this point, the car started to lose reception. I wasn't actually able to control it very easily. And I'm not really sure what happened there, but just pointing that out. We are looking at the actual video from the car right now and you can see the video quality is not so great. It's kind of grainy. The resolution is 640 by 400 which is not a fantastic resolution. Um, keep in mind this was towards the later part of the day so the sun was starting to go down and you can see the car kind of flipped over here at this point and I lift it back up. There is no sound so there's no microphone on the actual video recording. The car does respond pretty well when it takes off initially. The farther it gets, the more harder it becomes to control it because of the reception issues. Here you can see the car responded pretty well to this curb when it flipped over. Uh, well, it almost flipped over, but it didn't go all the way over, so that was kind of a cool effect. Here we can see how the car with this two-wheel drive responds when it's off-road and it will get stuck. And the car didn't quite have enough clearance to make this curb. We're looking at the onboard video again and one of the things I want to point out is the further the car went out the video would actually cut off. Um, I don't know if that's a range issue or whatnot. It does give a give interesting perspective when it goes underneath a vehicle like this. Um, that's one of the cool factors, I guess, that children would especially like. And uh, this was towards the later part of the day. And you're gonna see some video break up. It looks like there's some loss of transmission of signal. So overall, would I recommend getting this Air Hog model? I'm not really sure. The quality of the onboard camera is very disappointing. The lack of control, the further the car went out, and as you can see in this video, it didn't really go out that that far, but um, less than 100 yards for sure. And consider, consideration of the price, uh, I'm not really sure. I think I would go for a more typical remote control model.